G'day everybody, welcome back to another episode of Crafted by Tim. I've got a really cool project for you guys today over the past two... Three weeks? Two weeks. I think three. Over the past three weeks I've been working on a, uh, a, pill uh, a billet of Damascus. Currently I've just been uh, building up the layers, but I've right, right now I've got it in the forge. And we're going to take it out and we're going to put in a little bit of pattern. And we're going to turn this uh, Damascus into a pen. Now I haven't seen a lot of people do pens out of Damascus, mainly I think that's because Damascus isn't exactly cheap or easy to make, so to make a pen to sell would be like, <laughs> hey who wants to buy a $120 to $200 pen? <laughs> yeah. I gotta go get to work because I'm pretty sure I might actually be burning my Damascus, I really hope not. So we have about a 15 to 16 millimeter uh, round stock now, um, starting off with a 14 to 16 millimeter round uh, square piece. Uh, I think it's about 120 millimeters long. I'm pretty sure I only needed 80 mil, uh, but hopefully, hopefully we have more than enough, which would be great. So the twisting, how did that go? Not very good. So the reason why twisting didn't work very well is because this is what I'm using to twist. Now. As you'll notice, it's kind of short in comparison to what a lot of other people use, which means that you don't get as much leverage. Not getting enough leverage means that it's more difficult to twist. And with the thickness of this material being about 15, 16 mil thick, it takes an awful lot of effort to actually twist it properly. So we have a pretty uneven twist, but I'm hoping that it's actually going to uh, end up being a more interesting pattern because of how how uneven it is. Another thing that happened whilst I was twisting it was uh, it seemed that a uh, a little bit of delamination opened up right smack bang in the middle. I'm not entirely sure how how this is going to go from here. I'm hoping that the uh, that the delamination is sort of going to just disappear. I know it's not going to. There's uh, but I don't know whether or not there's anything that I can actually do now to fix that delamination apart from cutting it out forging it back into a square bar and then doing the entire thing again problem with doing that is because i've already put the twist in it i can't get my um my two separate patterns so i think the only way to fix this is to either say please don't explode whilst i'm turning you on the lathe or just start over completely i'm gonna try and still do this on the lathe hopefully i can do it I don't know what's going to happen. I'm hoping that it doesn't explode. It probably won't. Uh, now that I've said that, I'm I'm really nervous about doing this, but hopefully everything turns out all right. Um, and hopefully it doesn't actually show up too much in the uh, in the finished product. Let Let's just uh, let's let this cool down and see what we can do. Okay, so here is about currently where I'm at. Um, minor setback. So I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to recover everything, but I did a dumb. I didn't check whether or not all of the footage had moved before I deleted it off the camera. It said it had finished moving, but apparently I'd only selected one of the folders. So. I've lost an entire day's worth of footage. Now I'm hopefully going to be able to recover that, in which case this makes this entire thing redundant. Um, I'm hoping that I can recover it, but if I can't, I'm really sorry guys. Um, it hurts, it really does. Uh, from, from where I was previously, all I've done is I've taken it down. So on the very end, I had it at about 
9.3, yeah, 9.3 millimeters um, in diameter, so right here where I've done the 10 millimeter tap. And the rest of this I've left to just over 11 millimeters. It's 11.56 millimeters, 11.5 millimeters or so. Um, that's still a little bit large. Now it does actually kind of feel quite nice in the hand. Um, it does also feel kind of short in the hand, uh, but it's also quite weighty as well. So I want to remove some of that weight, so I'm, I am going to take a little bit more off the outside. And as you can see in a few spots like there, you still have uh, the raw forged material. We don't want that, we want a, we want a nice clean finish right across. I've got here some, uh, some nice machining brass. The general plan is to take about 30 millimeters of it and uh, basically just machine it down to about the same diameter and uh, hopefully we'll just be able to drill it out a few times and get it to the size that we need. Okay, so this part got caught in the lathe, and because of that, it got crushed. Which means... <sighs> this is one of the worst things about lathe work. If you stuff up, you have to start over. I have just enough brass to do, to try it once more. And if it doesn't work, oh boy, I'll have to outsource to another material. Finally got it, okay? So this is, this is it. Look at it, it's nice and shiny. Little indent there. 
Yeah, there you go. Uh, that's where the jaws of the cru uh, the the vice crushed it. I mean, not vice. Um, Chuck crushed it. Just that little bit. <laughs> oh, it hurts. It hurts. It actually hurts. Um, but it turned out right, uh, all right this time. M my main problem was that I had to take it down beyond the point of the uh, of the threading. A as you can see, just here, um, you can see that little hole there. That's because the uh, the threads were slightly uh, they, they they come out too far, so it becomes incredibly thin and it breaks through. All I have to do is uh, just finish up turning up the back end, um, make sure that everything's square, everything fits together nicely, and then I can finally etch the, uh, the rear end of the pen. post that I made a little while ago about the uh, smallest part being the most important. This tiny little thing, it's just a bit of off-cut Damascus, <laughs> basically put down the barrel of it so that the pen sits at the correct height uh, because I drilled out the hole a little bit too deep. So this is a different mixture of ferric chloride, close to 50-50, ferric chloride and apple cider vinegar. For the front end of the pen, I'm thinking it's going to look pretty cool to do a bit of a cold blue. So I've got this uh, gun, gun blue cream. Uh, G96. It's actually really easy to apply. What you need is a paper towel uh, and you basically just wipe a little bit onto your paper towel and uh, you and you'll see how how quickly this this works and instantly there you go it changes color. It's really hard to get a consistent color change and I think that's the uh, the main difference between doing it this way and uh, doing it with the liquid gun blue. There you pretty well have it. Okay, so it's just gone 45 minutes. Whoa! That is awesome. Alright, looks like I'm going to have to do a little bit of cleaning up work. I'll talk about this in a second, but I'm just going to clean this up real quick. Okay, so it's been about a day since you last saw the Damascus. I came back, I sanded it over, I got rid of all those scratch marks, and then I went to etch it again. And I forgot about it inside the etch, and it etched away a lot. Um, and when, when you etch Damascus made with mild steel, I've noticed that I've found significant problems when it comes to it looking really dirty. You can see it quite well there. Which is unfortunate because I reckon this would have looked really cool if I didn't forget about it, which I'm really bummed about. Everything fits together really nicely. That spacer is never going to come out ever again. Thank you everybody so much for watching this video. I really liked the way that this turned out. Um, and although it didn't turn out exactly the way that I was hoping it would, it actually turned out really nice. And I, I really like the way that it feels in the hand. It feels like it's the right size. And that was something I was very worried about because of how thin most of the pens and pencils are have uh, in comparison to this one. It's also got a lot more weight to it, which I actually kind of like. Um, it, it feels a lot heavier in the hand. Um, and it's got a good sort of, it's almost like a pommel on the end um, where you have extra weight on right on the end um, to help sort of balance it out a little bit. Of course this is like way too technical for a pen but it is a really nice uh, pen to use. Something that I think is part of the footage that I lost was actually what sort of pen I'm using. Uh, this isn't a sponsored video but I'm using a Parker. Is that going to focus for me? Uh, sort of 
It's a Parker 0.8 millimeter pen, I believe. There you go. ISO number or something like that. If if you want to use the same particular uh, same sort of pen to make your own, this was a lot of fun to do, and it was a it was definitely a good bridging project into going back into lathe work. And I, re I really want to uh, get a little bit more involved in doing lathe work and doing machining because I haven't done very much machining at all, and I haven't done machining for two years since I was in uh, high school. Um, anyway. Wow, I've been out of high school for two years. It did turn out really well, although it didn't turn out exactly the way I was, I was hoping it would. I'm actually still really happy with the, the finished result. And not to mention the, uh, the, the pen cartridge that I'm using, the ink cartridge that I'm using. I actually really like it. It's, it's, nice, it's a nice flowing um, pen. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I've got, I've actually got a pretty cool idea concept thing that I'm tossing around in my head. I am going to be releasing a video soon on that. But yeah, in the meantime, I hope you guys stay safe, happy crafting, and as always, cheers.